do you know that tailoring can make you money join me today as i talk to a kenyan who is earning a living out of tailoring here in the usa and it's not only earning a living she's dressing the stars she dressed some of the stars at this year's oscar awards red carpet my name is bonventure and this is serious business I started sewing at a very young age. Uh, I must have been maybe six, seven when I um, I took my mom's wedding veil. And I cut it up and I, I made something. So I was just like, wow. And my parents just were not trying to listen to, to hear that. And so they bought me a sewing machine at a very young age. And so that began the journey that has brought me to where I am today. In a world where dreams are often deferred but never forgotten, one woman has dared to weave her destiny from fabric to fame. My name is Victoria Kigeni and I am the founder of Gusa by Victoria, which is a, a women's clothing store in the heart of uh, York, Pennsylvania. And I have been in this premises for a little over a year. And this is what it looks like. So when you walk in here, the first thing that greets you is the name Gusa, which is Swahili for touch. So touch by Victoria is what we, we do here. We touch people with the culture and my heritage that uh, speaks very loudly through everything that I do all the things that I do here are handmade so every single thing that you see here I have created as a young girl growing up in the coastal city of Mombasa in Kenya Victoria was always fascinated by the art of sewing when I was younger I used to be taken to my mom took me to a, a to a Mombasa to the tailors there and they would make me what I wanted to wear and so that has carried throughout the years um, I also know that um, my maternal grandmother that I never met um, was also a great um, a sewing person. She loved to sew and I think that's a gift that I've inherited from her. Her parents, though skeptical at first, eventually recognized her passion and supported her decision to pursue a degree in fashion in the United States. After high school, after A-levels, uh, my parents found out that there was a recruiter that was coming to Kenya from um, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. And so I went to Nairobi, we spoke to them and, um, you know, everything worked out and I ended up in Savannah College of Art and Design. And this is where I spend a lot of my time. And yeah, so this is where I hang out. This is my second home. And it just reminds me of what it looked like when I went to school in, 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 in Kenya. Chogoria Girls High School is where I did my A-levels. But I also was a student at Aga Khan High School in Mombasa. And that's where I, I really um, honed my skill until I was able to come to the United States to go to uh, Savannah College of Art and Design to continue, um, you know, perfecting my, my talents and my skills. And so, yeah, so these are the sewing machines that I use. Uh, for the longest time, I would just use the home machines back here, like something like that. I had something small like that. But we've um, elevated our services, so we need things and tools that allows us to work a little faster and more professionally. So these industrial sewing machines is something that you will see that is commonplace in a lot of people that do the work that I do. And so, yeah, so this, this is my, my, my little space. And um, I love it here. I could live here if I didn't have kids, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> so, but uh, this is my play area. This is my, my uh, little slice of heaven. Victoria's journey was not without its challenges. She faced criticism from relatives and friends who saw fashion design as an insignificant career choice. Yeah, yeah. you talked about the sewing machine and uh, tailoring. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when you talk about towing, sewing machine, mm -hmm. what people think of is the tailor. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the local perspective, Nobody can relate tailoring to designing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can expound on that so that those guys who are upcoming, yeah. they can know that somebody can be in the U.S. 
and Anna leaving us, not as a tailor, but through tailoring yes. as a designer. Yes. So when we talk about that, tailoring and, and, and fashion designing, they're, they're really um, one and the same for, for the person that does that on, on a day-to-day -day basis. But of course, uh, fashion design is actually the, the art of creating something, of, of sketching something, of, 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 of interpreting what someone has in their mind and bringing it to life. So when you come to the United States and you're thinking about uh, tailoring uh, compared to what we know tailoring to be back home, people may not even seriously you know, consider that as something that can actually can be a viable thing that can help you to sustain your family, which I have been able to do because for the most part, a lot of what happens in the United States has shifted so much that it's, it's, it's been removed from people's hands and gone into the factories. So um, the idea that you can find someone that knows how to actually use their hands and do something without using uh, um, uh, big manufacturing plants is something that is really, really needed. It's, it's, it's an art. They say it's an art that is dying. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that it is something that is viable and people still want to learn how to sew because I, I get people asking me to teach them how to, to uh, sew. Uh, and then it grows from there. Um, tailoring is not the tailoring that we know back home that like Moimbe Tayari, for example, you go and find somebody on the, on the side street and you're like, you know, how can they possibly pay your rent with that? Uh, the, the answer to that is absolutely yes, you can. And, you know, my example that, you know, people follow you and they, they want you to do, and actually some will come in here with just, you know, I need something altered a little bit. And then they look and see the kind of quality of work that you pre present to them. And then they want more from you. And so it has, that has been the case for me all the time. People will come in here and check me out and figure out like, really, is this something that is, you know, can she really do this? And then when I prove to them that I can, then it becomes a, 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 a relationship that continues going forward, you know, and we are able to, to, to make more things for them. Victoria persevered and worked hard to achieve her dreams. She graduated from college and began working in the clothing industry. I started utilizing my skills by working for local companies of factories. So um, I worked for companies that work, did work for um, clothing for Banana Republic, for example, and other bigger names. So my, my skills continued to be sharpened, uh, looking at all these things that I was doing and uh, the, the, uh, the quality of the product that I was, I was making. And so there was that. There was other companies that did home decor stuff, so uh, cushion covers or uh, sofa set covers and stuff like that and then they there's something happened that the economy started shifting where all the factories just were suddenly just falling out and being closed and all the work was being shipped to um, to uh, outside countries so Asia India and you know China and all those places so that at by that time I'd become a single parent of four children and so I, I really wanted to be able to find one job that I could, uh, that could help me to sustain my family. And um, that is how I w was able to walk away from that and put that in the back burner and find myself in the construction industry. She made the difficult decision to leave the fashion industry and pursue a career in engineering. She became a state certified engineer and worked in the construction industry for 13 years. This was a male dominated field. After a uh, four-year uh, apprenticeship program with the International Union of Operating Engineers, I became a certified engineer for the state and started doing the, uh, the work that was required of me. So they would send me everywhere because as a, as a member of the union, they'll send you to places that you're needed. So I went to, um, I did all kinds of work. I, I did demolition of, of, of baseball stadiums. Um, uh, natural gas pipeline jobs where we would go and find these natural gas pipes that had been buried um, in, in farms all over Pennsylvania and um, you know make sure that those pipes are if there was problems if the gas wasn't getting to the places that it needed to get to we would have to dig this out and of course that was what I was doing dig out you know find the thing and look for the anomalies fix it or, or replace it but for the most part, the infrastructure is so old, we would just end up patching them instead of replacing it because it's really expensive to be able to replace this whole thing because it's just a network of pipelines everywhere throughout the nation.
Despite working in the engineering sector, Victoria's passion for fashion never faded. She decided to return to her roots and started her own label, Gusa by Victoria. After 13 years, uh, my kids were becoming teenagers and I knew I needed to be home with them. Um, and uh, so I, I parted ways with that and came back to what I've always wanted to do, which is open up a shop. And so my first shop was opened up on um, uh, 2016 and the then ambassador uh, came in and did the grand opening ceremony here in, in York. And then, um, and then COVID happened and everybody had to rethink about what we were doing. And so I closed that shop and went on to, um, I opened up, uh, I went into a smaller space. And so that studio became the place where I was doing all these masks for people and things like that. And somewhat just is trying to stay alive and viable until it was time for, for people to come back out after we've, we've discovered now we, we just have to live with this thing. The brand celebrates cultural diversity through fashion artwork and jewelry. Some of the things that you see here are curated to complement the work that I do here. So jewelry like this is from uh, places that I, you know, I look at things that might uh, complement that. Uh, what I make here and some of the jewelry, for example, like this ring and other pieces that you'll see here are uh, pieces that are created by artisans from Kenya. So I have somewhat become a self-appointed ambassador uh, for Kenya. So I try to bring as much of my heritage and whatever it is that we create from home and I bring it here. So um, if you're not able to travel, then you can travel through your senses when you come to our shop. So for example, something like this is Kahawa. Kahawa is made, um, of course, in Kenya by Kenyan um, women farmers so every time you buy one of these and this these cost 25 dollars anytime you buy one of these a portion of that goes to support the women back home and the things that they need to do with the money that uh, is generated from that uh, and then there's also sculptures from different part of the continent these are from cameroon these are called i think they're called namji uh, dolls and i just thought this would be such a nice touch because cowrie shells is something that i grew up with uh, we were exposed to that and it's part of our culture. So there's that. There's also slippers that I decided, you know what, uh, I might as well just uh, celebrate everything that is from the African continent. So these are Moroccan slippers. They're indoor slippers. And I thought this would be a nice touch. Um, if you don't get to Morocco yet, at least you can slip your feet into something that has come from Morocco. Victoria's designs are inspired by her childhood in Mombasa and her experiences as a Kenyan living in the United States. Um, and I remember the excitement of, of watching a lot of tourists come to the area and looking to see what they're wearing um, and why they would wear something like that and if I could make it, what would it look like. And um, so my inspiration has come in different ways and from such a young age just looking at everything and so I, I've continued to, uh, to interpret what is going on around me by looking at what people are doing and what uh, situation we're going through as a whole. Victoria is also sensitive to the environment and takes every opportunity not to waste anything even if it means recycling. Um, I am a plant lover. I love plants. So these, this particular thing, plant has been around me for the past three years, I think, and it has stayed alive. I water it, I take care of it. And so the whole place is, um, you know, I surround myself with things that would make me feel good. I grew up on a farm in Kwale district. So um, farming and anything green is, is, is something that I, I really surround myself with to make myself feel good because the cold is just something that I'll never get used to as somebody that moved to this area uh, those many years back. Uh, the jewelry that you see there, the earrings, we talked about the necklace, but the earrings are things that I create also. I just I decided I'll start using that as well. Uh, you know, showcasing other things that, you know, most creative people can do a lot of things. So I decided, you know what, let me create things that can complement what I make. And so when co somebody comes here, they can actually buy uh, something that, you know, complements the dress that they pick up, a, a blouse they pick up and, you know, so we keep it moving that way. Those baskets are also my handiwork. Um, if you look a little closer here, you will see 
that they have they're lined with this kitenge fabric which is an african print ankara prints so i decided i was going to you know uh, add a little touch to the things that i make here so my tagline is celebrating cultural diversity through fashion Victoria's big break came when Cindy Owens, the mother of Oscar-winning producer Erin Owens, walked into her store. Cindy was looking for a unique outfit for the Academy Awards. When somebody hears that uh, Victoria's work mm -hmm. featured at the Oscars, mm -hmm. they know now Victoria has money. <laughs> <laughs> so is it something that uh, uh, created uh, opportunities for mm -hmm. you? Is it something that mm -hmm. uh, can make somebody money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I, want, I, I like to say that that journey began 30 years ago. That's how long I've been in this country. And when I first came to the country and the, the first stop I made, I, I, I found a job at the school, right? Um, and then the first stop I made was at, a, at the, a local thrift store and I bought my first sewing machine. I just knew I needed to have a sewing machine r right by me at all times. And so that journey from there to here is, is it's taken me that long. D does it have to take that long for everybody? No, because Abu, you know, Bahati Amtu is different from somebody else, right? But for me, it took that long. And yes, when the opportunity came, I really didn't even think they were going to win. And be so when they won, and it just opened up all these doors, that meant the work is there, yes. Uh, am I rich? No. <laughs> <laughs> but am I going to get there? Yeah, if I, if I continue to do what I'm doing and position myself because now I'm getting, what happens is people start, there's this influx of people who want you to do all this work. And if you're the only person doing all this work, you have to be very careful not to water down your work because you want to take, you know, say yes to everyone and then your work becomes diminished or take the steps that you need to take to create a team that will allow you to move forward and make the money that you want to. Yeah, because honestly, yeah, that, that's, an, uh, that's the biggest stage ever that I've, I've been on with my work. Victoria was overwhelmed with emotion when she saw Cindy wearing her design on the red carpet the Oscars, mm -hmm. the, the guys on the red carpet. Yes. Uh, I'm sure it must have been a very anxious moment. It was, it was. And even um, I remember just waiting to hear specifically the category, which was um, uh, the documentary uh, uh, um, contenders. And so when it came up and I you know, I had called, I had told everybody, this is what's happening. I made a jacket for someone and please pray. And, and so the buzz and excitement of that and to actually watch and hear their name be called to go and get the Oscar was just mind blowing. I just, I, I mean, maybe you can sense things, but you don't, you don't want to say anything until it happens. But a, a part of me felt that it was, it was going to happen, especially because the, the documentary itself was 20 days in Mariupol and with Ukraine still experiencing what they're experiencing. Um, I knew it would pull at people's hearts strings and, um, is a, it's a serious thing. And it, I, th I thought that it would stand a chance to win and it did. Yeah. So, and I'm sure you might, you must have watched that with your family. How did the children react knowing that now that is mommy's work? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're very excited. They were very excited, but also they've seen me do this. Like my, my youngest was born into this thing. You know, they, he, he found me sewing. <laughs> so, so they know it's something that I've, wa I've worked on tirelessly and I've continued to perfect uh, these frustrating days when your work isn't doing what it's supposed to do or, you know, um, when COVID came and we had to shut everything down and just focus on making masks as opposed to making things that you actually want to wear. But um, yeah, they were all very excited and, and uh, so was I. The Oscars moment has opened up new opportunities for Victoria. It's, it's just been an amazing ride. Uh, I can just continue to serve the community with, with a sewing machine. A sewing machine has done things for me that I never thought I, you know, I would be able to do. Uh, like even to have an ambassador come and open up your shop, like where do you get an ambassador to just walk in and, you know, just become part of, of the things that you do. And then recently somebody walked in here and decided they wanted, um, wanted me to create a jacket for them. They were taking their daughter to the Oscars. Uh, and they, and I did, and she went to this event and the daughter uh, and her team won an Oscar. And that was maybe a month ago. 
and that has now just opened up a whole nother group of people that are wanting me to create things for for, for them so um, it's just uh, led from one thing to the next and it's it's just been very exciting to meet a lot of people to be able to talk to people about where I come from because in addition to the clothes people want to find out first of all they're like oh my gosh beautiful clothes but tell me what that accent is and that's why we have the the flag up there um, that was given to me by the, uh, the the team that came with the ambassador for the first grand opening so I've been able to serve the community in a variety of ways uh, it's just not clothing I also uh, I used to teach Swahili we haven't done that in a while now but we teach I also teach Swahili we also do uh, sewing workshops for adults and children and um, yeah we just continue to meet the needs of the community as, as they uh, as the the needs emerge Despite the challenges, Victoria's story is one of perseverance and passion. She never gave up on her dreams and continued to work hard to achieve her goals. Her journey is an inspiration to anyone who has ever doubted their abilities or faced criticism from others. Our off-the-rack pieces and what happens here is I'll just, you know, uh, I'm inspired to create something that's really very, very simple pieces. Um, people will come and ask for very elaborate stuff, but uh, at the same token, with these people that just want something simple. And so uh, very ready to wear, everyday wear stuff is what I create. I'll make those. These are seasonal. This jacket was also created here. So spring is also, you know, we're in spring, but it's still a little bit cool, right? So we have these things that allows people to be able to wear something that keeps them fashionable um, and protected from the elements. So that's what we do here. We also do men's shirts. We do men's wear. And this is just one example of, of things that we do. Uh, I'm very big on the kind of fabric that I use. And uh, typically I will go and get fabric from uh, dead stock supplies and dead stock is pre uh, pretty much fabric that is not going to be available anymore and so instead of throwing it away um, I get it at a discounted price and we save the planet instead of having to um, keep uh, recreating things or making more things that you don't need just use what's already there and so that's what we do here This is Hotel Yorktown. It's a historic hotel. A lot of people have stopped there and that includes Ma Margaret Thatcher and all those people. Great people have stopped by Yorktown Hotel. The Yorktown Hotel was uh, re-renovated. So one of the things that I went and was able to get from them are cur curtains, right? So the curtains that they used on the, in the hotels, I was able to gr uh, grab a few of those and we created these pocket squares and bow ties for men. And one of the other greats that stopped there is Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald from way back when. So they have huge um, wall paintings of, the, of both those uh, people. And so I named the, I also made purses. So I named the purses after Ella and the uh, Frank Sinatra bow ties and, and uh, pocket squares. So we're really big on um, upscaling or recycling what's already out there so we don't have to buy new things. This material here is the same material from the curtains from the original hotel that Victoria has um, that she has made some of her accessories from and this was just another artist that had some of that material um, to make this larger piece of artwork. So that sort of ties in as well with what Miss Victoria was doing. Victoria's advice to young people trying to make it in the fashion industry is to be true to themselves and not to compare themselves with others. She believes that everyone has a unique talent and it's essential to focus on developing that talent rather than trying to emulate someone else. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to encourage people to, first of all, to begin. 
because the tendency with most of us is even myself I have to discipline myself not to spend so much time on social media platforms looking at what everyone else is doing and never starting because the moment you start looking at other people's things you become so intimidated and feel like what you have to offer is so you know subpar that it's not worth the effort but to begin from where you are because like I said it took me almost 30 years right well, 30 years actually to get to the Oscars and it came in a different way uh, than what I had imagined but uh, you know the encouragement is that your work is so unique and only you can do it the way you do and people want that um, it doesn't matter what is going on in the world people are always looking for a place of comfort a soft place to rest and the work that you do for them whatever it is uh, painting sewing like I do, fashion design, music, whatever, all the artistries, um, you know, artistry is a wide uh, field and, you know, stay the course like anything else. It's like learning how to ride a bike. It's like learning how to swim. If you don't practice, then you lose your talent. So yeah, so this is, this is, this is what we do here. Here's another example of the things that we, we make, like uh, just a simple jumper. Um, spring is here so we create things that are really flexible and just fun for for the women folk and um, again when it's cold we'll make the, the coats like this one and we've really just been able to uh, you know serve the community to the best um, in, the, in the best way possible so there's those, there's that. I mean, there's, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. So for those people that can't find or are not interested in what we have off the rack, we're able to create something specifically for them. So they'll come, we take a, their measurements and then we, we go from there. Yeah, so another thing that has been a, a big hit is this, these jackets, uh, trench coats. And as you can see, it's just a patchwork um, effect here. So I've just taken African print fabrics and just, you know, uh, cut them up and then uh, do create a patchwork and then create the the jacket itself. So this uh, trench coat is something that has been very very um, popular. Another one is this one. This is 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 actually a winter coat, and it has um, some padding inside of it to keep it uh, to keep you warm when it's snowing outside. As for the future of fashion industry in Kenya, Victoria is optimistic. She sees a lot of talented young designers who are doing great things and she believes that with support and celebration, the industry can thrive. This is for uh, finishing the, the neckline of the outfit that's behind me. You see the outfit on the, on the mannequin? Victoria's aspirations are to leave a legacy of Gusa by Victoria, not just through fashion but also through music and food. She wants to share her culture with the world and inspire others to do the same. Yeah, and then the, from there you're talking, it's like uh, mm -hmm. you are making money from your passion. Yes. So I know there are many people out there who have a passion, mm -hmm. but they don't know that they are sitting on gold. They can make money from their passion. So those people that think that uh, um, leaning into your passion, and for in, in this is instance, leaning into your artistry isn't something that is uh, viable. Um, I am... Uh, poster child for the fact that it is possible um, that talents that people sit on and you think the only thing that's going to save you is your nine to five job I mean yes we're not bashing those you know the nine to five jobs are, are, are important but if you feel like um, you need some time to really investigate and find out if this is something that you can lean on to make money then start something on the side to begin with and then slowly grow that and see how you can serve the community um, it is definitely something that you can depend on as a matter of fact I've had a lot of people because of the fact that I'm here a lot of people have reached out to me to, to uh, try to figure out can you teach me how to do this so uh, or share some ideas of how you were able to do that how were you able to walk away from the construction industry for example I mean that is big checks I miss the big checks but I don't miss the work <laughs> and you know did it was it like that did I receive the same amount of compensation uh, at the at the on start of this no but with time yes because people need to know you first like just like anything else um, uh, you know I'm going to go back to uh, my, the Swahili part of me which you know there's a saying that I grew up with Chema Chadiuza you know, chema chadiuza kibai kinajitendeza, which, you know, basically means the good thing that will sell itself. So you, the thing that you do, even if there's a million people doing the same thing, 
the way you do things is so unique that people come to you exclusively for that it's just like walking into a supermarket and you see a bunch of bread from different companies but you know exactly why you want the one that was created by this particular company same thing with with our artistry she hopes that her story will encourage young people to pursue their passions and never give up on their dreams in the end Victoria's journey is a testament to the power of hard work, determination and passion. As she looks back on her journey, she is grateful for the opportunities she has had and the challenges she has faced. The, the challenges of, of funding. So if you don't have money, it is a question of pulling at your bootstraps all the time. Fortunately for me, um, throughout my years in the construction industry, I knew this is what I wanted to do in, in the end. Uh, I knew that I only had so much time to be able to, to um, accumulate the money that I needed to, to be able to open up a shop. So those are some of the things that uh, it will always be a challenge. But if you happen to be in a community that is, 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 is supportive, like the one I'm in, uh, there's opportunities of applying for grants, uh, uh, communicating or participating with your fellow uh, creatives. And so they make ways for you, they introduce you to other people and, and that expands your network. Uh, uh, you know, and so what they say, your network, your network is your net worth. So that, that allows me to be able to do what I do. But for the most part, yeah, funding is a problem. Um, and for most of us, because you're small, if you're afraid of growing, you don't want to scale too quickly, then that doesn't uh, reflect very well on you because you're not showing the, the banking industry that, look, there's proof that I've grown from here to, to here. Um, so that is one of the things. Um, the second thing would be the, the creating a team. If you're going to create a team, that means money is involved. So it's a question of figuring out how you're going to navigate that. Are you going to create um, apprenticeship programs, for example? Are you going to have interns working for you, for example? And if you don't, if you're not in a community that has a lot of design schools, you don't get a lot of, you know, you can't just go and say, okay, that's a pipeline of people that will keep coming to my shop. But um, there still is um, places that you could reach out to and, and, and find in the community, especially within the uh, network of people that I teach how to sew, there's people that want to learn these things. So we work with them and then uh, that's, that's what I've been able to rely upon. Um, yeah, so those are the, the two big challenges that I've, that, that I've faced so far. Um, and I guess the last one would be the fact that I'm still in the minority. In this community, uh, there's a handful of black uh, entrepreneurs that, um, that have an, a, a storefront like this. Uh, that's not to say that there's not people doing things. There's, people are opening up you know, LLCs every day, um, but they are at home. They don't have the, the necessary overheads of you know, expenses of, of having to keep something like this going. But yeah, so that I miss. I wish there was more of us. Um, but again, it all falls back to funding. But the good side of that is that as, um, you know, if I'm the only one in, in the community from Kenya doing this, then it allows people to now come and learn from, you know, from me. And that's how we celebrate self, uh, cultural diversity through fashion, through food, through music, because we, we offer all of those at the same time. She knows that her experiences have made her stronger and more resilient. And she's excited to see what the future holds. The next five years, I'd really want to be able to step away from actually doing the work itself. Uh, I'll always sew. I'll, I'll, I don't think there's retirement in my, in my cards, only because I love what I do. And, and they say when you're doing something you love, then they, you know, it's not like you're, like you're working really. So, but ideally, I'd like to step back and create a... Uh, um, uh, uh, a practice where other people are actually doing what I want done. So I'm just um, delegating and telling them this is what we're creating. So I'll, I'll, you know, sketch the ideas and bring the visions into reality through other people's hands, but remain small enough that we're not losing the the the, the uh, authenticity to the extent that we can hold on to it. Um, and so, you know, I still want to be able to grow enough to be able to uh, serve people. Uh, 
from from their head to their toe and everything that they need from their home for their homes um, anything that they want to drink like the coffee you know so I want to be able to serve people in, in, in across the board that way As Victoria's inspiring story comes to an end, remember that turning your passion into a business is within reach. Don't let fear or doubt hold you back from pursuing your dreams. Take the first step today and join the ranks of entrepreneurs who have turned their passion into a successful career. For the most part, my clientele, I cannot say it is broad, but I can tell you it is people that don't look like me, which is interesting, but also very refreshing because it tells me there's a hunger for people who want something totally different. We don't want to go to Nordstrom's and wear the same things everybody else is wearing. Yes, uh, we don't want to go to, first of all, Nordstrom might be out of somebody's, you know, a budget you know so and that's not to say my stuff is cheap uh, it's just to say that there's a there's a different group of people that we can we can cater to you know and so a lot of my clients are um, Caucasians and I, I'll have a sprinkling of people you know that that come from home and and are looking for something specific but um, I, I have been able to stay alive because of my community and and the people that support the work that I do and also I have an online presence uh, I have an um, online shop and so I get a lot of my customers through there if you're inspired by Victoria's journey as we are be sure to like share and subscribe to this channel for more stories of passion turned into business. Until next time, when we'll feature another individual who has made the leap and is living their dream, keep chasing your passion and making it a reality. See you in the next video. So I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn is something that hasn't been very active, but it's, it's, it's something I'm going to really jump into and revive only because of my Oscar moment. So now I could use that to be able to share the story of being able to use your artistry to, to go so many places and be able to offer the, the advice and encouragement to people that are wanting to do the same. So uh, that, those are the places you could find me and then my online shop is www.gusabyvictoria.com and in there you should be able to find everything how to uh, you know the contact information the email is there the phone numbers are there for somebody to be able to reach reach me